Hello booktube, today I come to bring you my February reads and I'm doing it sitting down on a really squeaky old office chair so I'm gonna try and stay still and just like float from left to right a bit. I read four new books this month and then I re-listened to the Old Kingdom series by Garth Nix, Sabriel, Lirael and Aborson on audiobook and they're just charming, they're just lovely. Um, but yeah, these are the four books I have to talk to you about and honestly, not that great, didn't have a great month you'll see. The first book I read is The Abortion by Richard Brodigan, which was published in 1973. Um, oh, I hated this, really hated it. So I heard about this book on a This American Life episode, it was called uh, The Room of Requirement. It was a really fantastic This American Life episode and it talked about this book because what happens in it is that there's a, uh, there's a library that you can only deposit books in, like unpublished manuscripts you can't take anything out of. And I was like, that sounds really just fantastical and interesting. And I've seen a bunch of people in the Goodreads review also be like, I came to this from This American Life and I didn't like it. Um, as it says in the title, not called The Library, it's called The Abortion. It's about an abortion, but not really. So we start with our dude who is like in charge of this library. He's there 24 hours a day. He doesn't have a life outside of that. Um, and one day this girl called Vida walks in and oh let me describe her to you. Then I noticed what was so extraordinarily strange about her. Her face was so delicate, perfect, but her body was fantastically developed for the fertility of her face. She had very large fully realized breasts and an incredibly tiny waist and large full hips that tapered down into long majestic legs. Her body was very sensual inciting one to think of lust, while her face was Botticellian and set your mind to voyaging upon the ethereal. Um, so this is a woman that is like so fucking hot that she hates her body and feels really disconnected to it because like everyone else is obsessed by her um, and she like gets into a relationship with this guy that runs the library and she gets pregnant they have to like go down to Tijuana and have an abortion but it's just like e this man is oh I hate the writing of this it's so sexist and like pervy it's so pervy he's talking about like 12 year old girls and, like anytime he describes a man it's like you know, he was tall, and as far as you describe a woman, it's like she had small breasts, and it's just gross. I think men talking about women's bodies can be good. It's possible for that to be good, but for the most part, just fucking don't. This is one of those Americana books that, for some reason, people respect, and it's just a pile of shit. Don't even bother. The next book I absolutely loved, in contrast, um, and that was A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towns. This was written and, well, published in 2016 and takes place in Moscow um, after the revolution. So it starts in 1922 with uh, court proceedings of this gentleman called Alexander Rostov, Count Rostov, um, who was basically like not so, he wrote some like poetry that kind of aligned with the Bolsheviks sort of, so they, even though he was like a count and of high status, they didn't kill him. They Instead, they were just like, you have to live in this hotel for the whole of the rest of your life. Like you can't leave the metropole in Moscow. Uh, so in 1922, he was 33 years old and the book goes on until the 60s. And it's just a really just charming, charming outlook of one really like gentleman is this. <laughs> I thought the title was really shit before I read it, but actually that very much, he's, he's such a gentleman. Um, and he goes from being in this like lovely suite to being put up in the attic somewhere and then he makes that space his own and he ends up working as the head waiter in the, the really really nice restaurant in the place and he has like a really great friendship with the head chef and the maitre d and he knows all the ways around that. I feel like I'm describing this really boringly. Um, it was sort of, it was like serialized escapades throughout the hotel in a really fun and lovely and heartwarming way. But you also get these, there are lots of footnotes which mostly describe the actual historical events. So you kind of, you can see the changes in Moscow during these times, as in he can see it very literally from the the fact that they're like, a, a suddenly there isn't any food in the pantry for them to make the, <laughs> the dinners with. Um, and there's like no guests staying in the hotel to suddenly there are loads of American tourists. Um, but then also these footnotes provide sort of like the wider his historical context of what's going on. I just found this really charming. And I went to Moscow a couple years ago and I remember looking at this hotel uh, and it's really nice to have sort of like a slight grounding in the location and the history before you get into this. Um, but also just like experiencing the history through this lens is just very enjoyable. Like if you want just like a, a nice, happy, calm read, 
would highly recommend. Ah, do you done? The next book I have is The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara. Um, this is her debut novel. Um, the other book that she wrote was A Little Life, which was one of my favourite books last year. So, you know when you find a really great book and you're like, eventually I'm going to read everything this person's ever written, so I may as well get on it at some point. Um, that's what this was for me. I didn't know or care what it was about before I picked it up. This also starts with court proceedings. Um, actually, I'm just going to read some of them out because that's easier than me telling you the plot. March 19, 1995. Renowned scientist faces charges of sexual abuse. Dr. Abraham Norton Perina, the renowned immunologist and director emeritus of the Center of Immunology and Virology at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, was arrested yesterday on charges of sexual abuse. Dr. Perina, 71, was charged with three counts of rape, three counts of statutory rape, two counts of sexual assault, and two counts of endangering a minor. These charges originated with one of Dr. Perina's adopted sons. These charges are false, say Perina's attorney, blah, blah, blah. Perina won the Nobel Prize of Medicine in 1974 for his identification of saline syndrome, a condition that retards aging. The condition in which the victim's body remains preserved in relative youth even when its mind degrades was found among the Opa Ivu Eke people of Ivu Ivu, one of the three islands of the Micronesian country of Ivu Ivu. <laughs> I've just been guessing at how to pronounce these things the whole time I was reading it. I like got, I, I would look at it a bunch the first time a word came up, decide on the pronunciation in my head, and probably think it wrong for the rest of the time. Perina, who first travelled to Uibu as a young physician with the noted anthropologist Paul Talent in 1950, spent many years on the island conducting field research. It was also there that he adopted his 43 children, many of them orphans or sons of daughters of impoverished Opo Uibu, aka tries people. Blah, blah, blah. So the rest of this book takes the format of a like memoir sort of thing from jail by Dr. Perina um, that is peppered with footnotes by a good friend of his that's editing it for publication. And it was just a very strange book um, because the vast majority of it takes place on this one trip um, to this island finding, trying to find this lost tribe and trying to find out what's weird and different about them um, back in 1950. So mostly it's just like living this island life and trying to communicate with these people. But then like a small amount of this book is also just about him being a pedophile. And it's very hard, to, like I, they don't really mesh well for me. And it was really quite disturbing. Um, a Little Life had some, was like very uncomfortable in many places. But because in that you were sort of grounded in really caring about the characters, it made it okay and an interesting read. Um, but with this, I kind of like left it in the same sort of way of feeling a bit disgusted, but without having that heartwarming, but this was amazing and I feel, I feel for everyone. This was just like, he was a misanthrope and quite boring and mean. And I, yeah, weird, just like quite weird. It was well written and the, the, the themes and what it was trying to say were interesting. Um, I just, you know, I guess I'd had enough of like the perviness in the abortion that I've sort of done with that this month. Um, yeah, an odd one, an interesting one. I think if you've read A Little Life, this actually, it, may, it makes a lot sense that she would write that novel after having written this one. You can see the genesis of it. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't enjoy it particularly. My last book is the 1957 American classic, on the Road by Jack Kerouac. Um, I'm just gonna be straight, didn't enjoy this that much. I went into it already being annoyed at it. <laughs> I feel like it glamorizes this American, uh, like dickhead, vagrant sort of lifestyle. It's the kind of thing that I imagine teenage boys pick up and they're like, yeah, yeah, let's just like go be on the road. And um, I, <laughs> I was chatting with one of the girls uh, was also in the book club the other day and we were just like kind of like value having a future and a career and like a stable financial situation and this is like the opposite of that so um jack harrowack who like has renamed himself sal paradise what a name uh is basically this whole book is it doesn't have that much plot it's just kind of him going back and forth across america on these road trips where you know, he meets up with old friends and they party really hard and he's with the, his um, his best friend, Dean Moriarty, um, who his real name is Neil Cassidy. Um, uh, and it, like, he's just a mental, like actually crazy and dangerous and 
or met, like, I just, I know that if I met this guy, Dean, I would fucking hate him. <laughs> he's, he's such a rat bag, he's such an arsehole. It is very well written, I love the description, and I think it really, it did a great job of getting across that, like, vivality, that, that, like, lust for life, um, and, and going with it. But what's quite strange is that he managed, like, it seems, it feels like the person who wrote this book is not the person that was, that did the things in the book. Um, because you'd have to have a lot more, like, critique to write it. It seems like they were just kind of, like, in the narrative, just kind of like going along with anything and, like, having a good time and not really thinking deeply about any of the things they were doing or what it means or what it held for their future. But you couldn't have written out those things without having that kind of context. Um, so it was a very well written book, but I just didn't, didn't really care. This is one of the most famous or important books in the kind of like beat era of writers. Um, and I can see why, but also I just hold different values to all of those people. Sorry, I want to like pay rent and only have one wife. One wife? <laughs> That's not what I meant. Uh, like this is kind of a love story to the other character. Um, they had very like intense relationship and like really obviously cared about each other, but at the expense of caring about literally anyone else. <laughs> like, like Dean, this guy, he has a wife and then he leaves her for another woman and then he's like, oh no, I can just have two wives. I just, because I love them both, I love them both. But without thinking about how they don't fucking deserve that, you know, they deserve so much more. And then he does it again, what a jackass. Ah, oh, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop rambling on about that and leave you be. On the road, good book, not for me. Hopefully in March I'll be able to read some books that I can give more positive reviews on and I will see you then. Bye.